Okay, it is solstice night. 21st. Ah, uh, so I don't have much light in here. Need to get some batteries to. Help the. Let me try something. Right back. Okay, I got the energy to set up, so that'll work. Uh, solstice, wow, what a day. I thought I was going to, uh, um, you know, yesterday I had such great energy. I mean, great energy. But then last night when I went to bed, ooh. It's just like a whole nother vibration came through. Certainly levels of fear and the unknown and, and um, physical pain, which was kind of weird. Um, fitful sleep. Um, but again, I just went with it and I got up this morning and, and uh, I went to the I went to the senior center so I was able to get up and get my body done but it was foggy Ooh, it was very strange the, the weather and the energy uh, but I got the bus and I made it Uh, uh, made it to the senior center and uh, and they had I'm sorry they had their Christmas party you know for the senior center uh, uh, like an hour before lunch was served so there was about 30 40 people who showed up for the party you know all seniors in the in the neighborhood and um, it was noisy. I'm not a bit. I'm not a festive crowd person at all. Uh, uh, especially this morning because I was in such. It's just like round two of what I had two days ago. Just knocked me out again. I mean, I could barely hold my head up. <laughs> oh my God! But there I was. So I just, uh, you know, with what the little bit of energy that I had, just kind of observed. And I ran into a woman I met uh, over the summer. And uh, we shared a lunch together. Uh, and that's when I was taking the senior bus. She got on the bus. And so I, um, you know, we just kind of made friends and and uh like she was in her late later 60s and had her health issues but you know about 15 years earlier because of health concerns she went through uh, a period of homelessness in the bay area but she's she followed the programs and she was able to get housing up here in Wairika. Um, but because she's lived through homelessness, she understood and she, her heart always goes out for, for the people and she prays for us up here on the hill. And I can feel her prayers. It was like really, really beautiful. Um, and so she was at the Christmas, uh, lunch today and she had her, um, in-home caregiver with her. And so I had I, I had a chance to sit next to her and meet her caregiver and and just kind of catch up. And um, and the meal was like if I, I wish I could eat a lot of this food, but it just doesn't sit well. But they had Brussels sprouts, which were like really good. So I ate all of those. Um, 
and they were delicious. And so it was it was nice, but it was nice to touch base with her and and to be able to talk about being up here on the hill and everything and and uh, and her caregiver um, you know asked, well, do you have enough blankets? you know and and that type of stuff. I said, for the time being, I do, but I, I'll definitely need better equipment once the real winter weather comes in. Um, you know, where it stays below freezing during the day and, you know, gets down into the teens or single digits at night and also snowstorms. I'm not prepared for those things, but, but I don't know how to prepare for them right now. I, I know it, it's going to work out. And this really is a, a testament of faith. And I feel like the exhaustion, again, um, just made me sit still, let things develop accordingly. And um, so I had, a, I had a decent day up there. And, and you know, just ran a couple of errands and, and got on the bus and, um, and the evening bus driver, I, we kind of chat, uh, cause he used to pick me up when I was, uh, living in weed sometimes over at, you know, when we would talk. And so, um, but it was so interesting because I could barely talk. And um, for some reason, oh, I remember what it was. There was a woman who got on the bus. She was homeless and inebriated. Um, but the bus driver was playing Christmas music. And she sang along with the Christmas music. And uh, God, did she have a beautiful voice. Oh, you know, for the couple of lyrics she could remember. It was like, wow. And it brought to mind... You know, in the early 90s when I would be around, um, you know, people in the music industry and the film industry. And, you know, remembering how these films made and what goes on behind the scenes for everybody. And just remembering... Um, you know, listening to this Christmas music and everybody is like nostalgic. And I said, you know, hey, when they recorded that, it was great. But afterwards, they got drunk. I mean, these were really depressed people. All these c celebrities and this talent and everything. And so I started talking with the bus driver and I remembered, um... When I did a, I worked on a doc. Ooh, I'm so sorry. I worked on a documentary, um, like 1990 or so. I, I worked as assistant to the director on a documentary of Mary Pickford, and I had the chance to go up to, well, what was left of Pick Fair. It was Buddy, her last husband. Mary had already, had already um, passed away, but. Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Charlie Chaplin created uh, the United Artists as a union because, you know, those business people just took such advantage of the talent. And they were saying, you know, the business people, the producers, made all the money and the talent, you know, the talent got, like all workers in all industries. And so at that time, they created United Artists and they created a union um, for talent. And, and it was Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Charlie Chaplin. They were the original founders of, of United Artists. And, um, and so I went to, and I was telling the bus driver this, because we went into, um, Buddy Rogers was Mary's husband before she died. And um, Pickfair eventually had to be torn down because um, it was infested with termites, and so so they tore it down. However, uh, 
the guest house, which was like a three or four bedroom house anyway, was the one that Buddy Rogers was living in. And, um, you know, so we did this documentary and I had a chance to see the first Oscar. And Buddy Rogers spoke about how, you know, everybody was just having dinner together, Mary and Douglas and their friends and Charlie. And they said, hey, we should have a, you know, they're probably pretty tipsy. We should have a, uh, like an award show. And so somebody took the bait on that and they created a statue and then they brought it by later. And one of the guys said, um, I don't know if it was Charlie or Dennis, but he said, geez, that looks like my Uncle Oscar. And they said, yeah, let's call it an Oscar. That's how it got started. And so um, so they made these Oscars and they had this. this, And Mary's, the first female actor Oscar, was there. And I had a chance to hold it. Mary picked for the best um, actress of the year. And then the other thing that was really, I mean, there, that, that house was just filled with, like, Thomas Edison had a, had a model he made out of wood. It looked like popsicle sticks. And he w was making, this was before he came up with the light bulb. And he made a model of, a, of a studio that could rotate. It would have a hole in the top. So the sunlight could come through as they made the pictures. And the whole studio would rotate with the sun so they could always have light. And Thomas, that was, I saw he, the model he put together with that, with his hands. And, um, oh, and the other thing too, uh, I think this was back in the 70s or 80s, um, Buddy Rogers you know, because they were like royalty in Hollywood for decades. And Buddy Rogers was friends with Princess Grace of Monaco. And um, he flew out to visit her. She invited them, Buddy and his wife at that time. Uh, Mary had passed. And, she, um, and he flew out to Monaco to visit Princess Grace. And um, when he got there to their house or palace or whatever, you know, in Monaco, uh, Princess Grace left, left a beautiful handwritten letter to, uh, to Buddy and his wife saying, um, I'm going to be a little late. I have to go to the school to pick up Caroline and then we'll drive back as soon as I can pick her up. So... I'll be there in about an hour or so. Well, that was the day that Princess Caroline, or Princess Grace and Caroline drove off the cliff and uh, uh, Princess Grace died in that car accident. And so I had a chance to see um, print, and she had impeccable cursive penmanship, Princess Grace did. Uh, it was so beautifully written, too. It was just, she was royalty for sure. Um, so I was just sharing these stories, uh, and there were so many uh, when we were putting that documentary together. But as we were, as we were um, interviewing Buddy, you know, he was getting drunker and drunker. I mean, everybody, um, you know, they, they, they self-medicated with alcohol, you know, because it's a, it was a, it's a rough industry, very rough. Um, but anyway, um, so that's what brought to mind, and I shared that with the, with the bus driver, and he was like, wow, thanks for sharing, that was amazing. And so it kind of, kind of brought to mind, I mean, that was like 1990, and, you know, I used to have all these visions of the industry and really when I I worked in it, and I was able to do pretty good with it, you know, in my way. I didn't let myself get too involved. Um, I stayed more on the service, holistic healing end and guidance end of the spectrum for people in the industry. And so, 
so um, before I got poisoned and went through my own nightmare and that but it, it just as I was looking today and thinking about that and just going you know I just feel like um, spirit once again sent me off in different directions through tragedy for sure but uh, now it's like once again here I am I have some ideas of what to embark on but it's like oh my god how am I gonna get there and today so far every day is just very much one day at a time, step into the unknown, finishing up the old, and um, every day the next step gets revealed. So it's, it's challenging, but yet it's also, oh, sorry, somebody's chopping up some wood, sounds like, um, for their campfires up here. But anyway, that that was today, and um, solstice, the darkest night, the longest night. So, um, so with that, uh, just wanted to touch base. We'll see what tomorrow presents. All right, Sanam Waikuru, Shiva Gretch.